How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? What's the real truth about Citizen Kane? It'll probably turn out to be a very simple thing. Hey, everybody. We hope you're doing well. I'm Parker. And I'm Max. And welcome back to another episode of Better Than Citizen Kane, the highly subjective show where we look at a movie and ask that titular question. Because when every movie ever made is a reasonable contender for the title of greatest film of all time, you have to wonder, better than Citizen Kane? So grab your best friend and your eating scissors, because this week we're going anti-patriarchy and whirling a destructive path through our wealthy repressor's banquet. That is to say, this week we're discussing Vera Hitalova's 1966 Czechoslovak New Wave classic, Daisies. Marvelous. Forgot what I wrote for a second there, so I was just... Well, it's, it's new just, this time. It's it's lean. It's mean. It's all lean and mean. Yeah. Just like the world. Hey, if the world's getting lean and mean, why don't we? Why why don't we get lean and mean? Parker, <laughs> what's your history with daisies? Um, I first encountered daisies at the beginning of grad school. Um, so it was a film theory class that I took, and I had never heard of it before. Um, and we watched it. And while well, discussing, you know, experimental film, naturally. And mm-hmm. it was really interesting. Um, I I think, like, my personal taste in movies, not, like, a critical examination of them, just, like, personal subjective opinions and feelings. I'm not usually drawn myself to, like, experimental films, either mm-hmm. within my own work or within my own watching. So I think, like, it's a weird thing because... In my memory, I remember liking this movie quite a bit. And as years gone on, I've thought about it a lot. And then when I was watching it last night and I went to log it on Letterboxd, last time I'd watched it was the first time. And I gave it three stars the first time I watched it, which was kind of surprising to me. I was like, huh, Mm -hmm. that's interesting. Um, Because I remember liking it more than three stars. But I think just that initial watch that I had... I might have just bounced off it a little bit more than I had anticipated just because it's not usually my kind of oeuvre for stuff to watch. Um, But yeah, that was my history with Daisies. What about you? Parker, it's identical. Yeah. Like right down to the Letterboxd star rating experience because (laughs) I watched this in my undergrad. That's where it's not identical. Parker is smarter than me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I watched this when I was getting my bachelor's in film. Um, I think I watched it for film history, I imagine. Um, mm. I don't think we did like an exper- I didn't take any experimental film classes. We probably had an experimental film unit in film history like pre-1952. So watched it for that. I remember it was on my laptop through Canopy in my bedroom at my parents' house. Mm-hmm. And I probably wasn't even paying attention to it. Because when yeah. a movie is assigned as homework, you immediately go... Ugh less interested in the movie um at least that's what it was like for me and i'm i'm, I'm ashamed of that let me just make that clear no one no one i'm on record i'm on record fully ashamed i'm really sorry to all of the directors from is, is this your apology video yes oh, good <laughs> i messed up i put like one of those silent films on 2x speed one time and i'm not proud of that uh <laughs> But, you know, it was the pandemic. We were all having a rough time. Yeah. Anyway, watched Daisies, went, cool. Apparently, I gave it three stars on Letterboxd, and then I didn't look back. And, like, I'd think about it every once in a while, enough that I'm actually the one who suggested we watch this for the show. I'm the, I think I'm the one who put it into the calendar, mainly just because, yeah, I, I keep, I kind of, it's stuck in my head. And also, mm-hmm. watching it this time, I watched the... um. I managed to grab like the Criterion Blu-ray from my local library. Uh, and this thing looks great in 4K. I don't know what version you... Did you watch it in 4K? Uh, I, I just I had the 1080p. Yeah. It looks real crisp, Parker. It's really good. Um, highly recommend that. Uh, yeah, just had a brilliant time with it. Just absolutely amazed by everything that it's doing. Like, mm-hmm. the, like visual-wise. Like that's one thing about experimental film is that it's experimental. So you get to see like a ton of really cool stuff being done that you've not really seen before. Totally. Um, and it's, and it was really, it was just a blast. Yeah. I, I do. I do want to watch the 4k at some point. I'm sure it's really, really crisp looking, especially with those colors. This movie's so colorful, man. It's so colorful. It's so it's colorful. wonderful. Um, okay. So this episode's going to be a little bit different than some of the ones we've done in the past, just because, summarizing this movie is kind of impossible. Like, I think we'll kind of go over the scenes, but 
there isn't a plot to summarize. There isn't like no. a series of events to go over. It's basically, um, I mean, yeah. if I could just like take a stab at it, please. It's two women, Marie one and Marie two. They don't have names. Mm-hmm. Who determine at the start of the movie that the world is bad, so why shouldn't they be? And they set out on a on, a, on an odyssey of destruction and mayhem and mm-hmm. chaos. And basically that is uh, doing everything that women weren't allowed to do and yeah. people weren't allowed to do. Um, so they are, they like take older men out to dinner and like eat a bunch and then like get them on their train before they can like, like not pay their bill <laughs> or mm-hmm. like, you know, or something like that, you know, and like um, trick all these men, get them out of there. And then they just leave um, these men who would like otherwise be like, and now we're going to, you know, go back to my place. Mm. Like, no, get on your train. Um, they do that. They bicker a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of like playing with men's emotions and men's hearts. Um, just like a man confessing his love over the phone and just like not even paying attention and cutting up a bunch of sausages with scissors um, and bananas. Symbolism. And, and hmm, what? Hmm. Wait, did this know. movie mean something? Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just weird. It's just it's weird. weird. It's weird. But... I didn't get it. <laughs> All right. All right. Now that we got those characters out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> never to return again. Never to re- get them out of here. Um, you know, and then it kind of builds and builds, and they just keep doing this. There's a great sequence at a dance hall, um, mm-hmm. and then they it builds until they uh, arrive at a banquet that's been set for like a bunch of, you know, like communist wealthy government types uh Mm -hmm. and they just mess up the whole feast they just fuck it up have a food fight have a big food fight step in the food Mm -hmm. uh play with the food eat the food yes and then swing on a chandelier fall in water Mm -hmm. and that's very interesting and we'll talk about that and then they like kind of try to reassemble everything uh and then they get crushed by the chandelier so yeah that's the movie. That's the movie. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, so I have a little bit of background about the director that I'd love to go over. And then Fantastic. Um, I think you've got some stuff from some research as well. Yes. Marvelous. Um, okay. Yeah. So this film is directed by uh, Vera Hitilova. And uh, she was born February 2nd of 1929. She had a very strict like Catholic upbringing which is kind of reflected in her work and feeling isolated and feeling repressed and things like that. Um, She studied philosophy and architecture in college and then kind of dropped those areas of study as she graduated. Um, And she worked various jobs for a long time. She was a craftswoman, a model, a photo retoucher. um, And eventually she forced her way into the Prague Film School by working as like a clapper on other people's sets. Um, And just kind of wormed her way into enrollment and she was the only female student there at the time um and was just kind of constantly surrounded by film bros of the 60s and that was you know frustrating for her in a lot of ways um she was a huge part of the czech new wave of the 1960s which basically had a lot of absurdist humor, um, discontinuity editing, surrealism, things like that, um, kind of pushing against the more structured values and systems that existed in film at the time. Uh, So she makes this movie, and it immediately gets banned. It is not allowed to be shown in the Czech Republic. um, And, uh, or I guess, I don't know that it would be the Czech Republic at the time. Czechoslovakia. Uh, And so that's 1966. It was banned from screening her home country for over a year, um, mostly because, uh, which I thought was interesting. Like, there's lots of things that you would point to as maybe being like, oh, this goes against societal norms of the times, very, you know, aggressively feminist and things like that. But the main point of issue um, within the socialist government was the depictions of gross food waste. Mm -hmm. They were like, that is wasteful. Like that needs, that is, that is a problem. We don't like that messaging being sent out to our populace to be wasteful and gluttonous. We all need to conserve and share and all of these things, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, so it kind of goes underground for a while, gets chopped up, gets censored a ton, um, to the point that later on in her life, um, 
in like the 70s, she was invited to a film festival, the Year of Women Film Festival in the U.S., that first of all, her government wouldn't let her attend. And also, she told the festival, she's like, I don't have an uncensored print of the film. Like, it does, I don't have one anymore. She's like, there might be one in Paris or Brussels, but I don't I don't own either of those. Wow. Um, so, like, that was kind of where this was all sitting. So, she makes this film, and then three years later, she makes another film called Fruit of Paradise, which is also experimental and psychedelic. Um, and that movie is kind of the last straw for uh, the Czech government. And she's banned from making films for seven years. Yeah. Um, from 1969 to 1976, during which she directed commercials under her husband's name. That's right. how she still did work at the time. Her husband, who was also cinematographer on Daisies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's kind of the overview of what's going on with her. So that film festival happens in 1967. She's asked to attend um the festival started applying international pressure on the czechoslovakian government and was really pushing on her behalf of saying like hey she's an artist let her have her film let her make movies let her come to this festival um she wrote a personal letter to the president detailing her career and personal belief in socialism she's like i'm not against you i'm not against your government like i am a socialist just because I'm an artist and just because some of the things that I have to say may go against your perceived values, I'm not trying to sow dissent of this form of government. Yeah. And that worked. Um, the pressure campaign was successful, and she was able to make another film after that, which was The Apple Game in 1967. Um, and after that, she was continuing to allow making films, still met with a lot of controversy and heavy censorship over the years from the Czech, uh, Czechoslovak government. But her last film was released in 2006. And, yeah. you know, she had a full a full career. But, yeah, just very interesting stuff of just a constant uphill battle that she was running into. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, from, like, the minute of release, um, this movie kind of being, like, really kind of incendiary in mm -hmm. a way. Um, totally. I will say that uh, the film premiered in Prague on December 30th, 1966 and was like widely popular in Czechoslovakia with both critics and audiences. I'm pulling from Carmen Gray's essay in the Criterion Blu-ray um, mm -hmm. about over like uh, daisies. Um, and like the positive reception of it was like what led a member of parliament to like issue a critique of it and it was suppressed by censors and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, this movie mainly comes from a place of obviously like anti-patriarchal um, and also like at this time, like there was like this really heavy like um, communist government repression happening. Um, and so it's really interesting that this film like highlights and accentuates specifically like individualism and like individual freedom and um, you know, like gluttony and like all of these things, not necessarily like endorsing gluttony as a thing, but just like freedom, right? Yeah, just freedom allowing to do women so. to exist in those spaces. Yes, absolutely. Because like, yeah, men also are allowed to just do that, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and they're also allowed to fight one another. There's like a lot of like, the two Marie's like fighting with each other and like being mm -hmm. really awful to each other. Yeah. Um, which also feels like an element of freedom that mm -hmm. women didn't have at the time, you know? So like, that's very interesting to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, just, I would, I would, that was, that was kind of my main observation this time was just like, especially with the food stuff, but everything else as well. It's just, Things that even now, like, women aren't allowed to do in movies. You don't see women eat very much on screen. Mm -mm. It just doesn't really happen. Especially, like, in excess like this, right? Yeah. Like, and you get, you get stuff like that with men all the time. And yeah. it's just so interesting to me that, like, even now, you know, 60 years later, it's still the norm in media that it's like oh yeah i i don't often see women 
being presented this way on screen. There's yeah. still kind of that glass case around them in certain ways of like how they are allowed to be perceived. Absolutely. Um, something that I do think is interesting about this is that Hitalova was very uneasy with being called a feminist, mm. um, mainly due to just like the fact that that label, like in her cohort, was viewed as a Western import. So if people were like, oh, so you're a feminist, you're a feminist filmmaker, she'd be like, no, like don't. Mm. Don't call it that because that's seen as like a Western thing. Um, I thought it was interesting that like, let's see here. Um, yeah, Central European dissidents tended to eye with suspicion slogans and overstated causes. They felt words had been emptied of meaning by the ubiquitous state propaganda that cynically compromised the truths of lived reality in the name of ideas. Mm. So I thought that was interesting of like, they don't even like, they're just, they don't want labels on things because yeah. they feel like that's meaningless. It, it just is what it is. Interesting. And also at the time, like obviously she would like, like it says here, she was after all already going out on enough of a limb by producing cinema as radical as Daisy's. Um, basically saying that like, yeah, why would you add more like fire to the flame, you know, or like more fuel to the fire um, by explicitly saying what this film is about? Yeah. Just let it speak for itself. And if you don't label it as anything, then it's up for interpretation and you can say, that's not what I was intending. And then there's less of a chance of it being banned forever. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But it just reminded me also of the director of Jean Dielman, who also was like, I'm not a feminist. Don't call me that. Yeah. I think that's very interesting at that time of like not wanting to be seen as a feminist filmmaker. It almost feels like maybe it's also just like, I'm just a woman making films. Does a right. film have to be a feminist film if I'm making it? Even though I would say that these two films are specifically anti-patriarchal and like very much like what women are or are not allowed to do, right? Totally. But like this idea of like, oh wow, like this woman made this film. Isn't that so amazing? And it's like, and it's got something political to say, feminist, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, right. yeah, but like, does that also like limit what the film can be? Right. Yeah. That label like, on it. I don't think anybody asked Bergman if he's like, is this, this film's about male power. Like, I think that's never <laughs> once been a question a male director's <laughs> ever gotten, you know? <laughs> that's really yeah i'm gonna just start saying that yeah <laughs> <laughs> just any movie made by a man i'm just gonna be like i, I don't really i don't know i found it really brave how this just like absolutely like champions male power i just think that's really <laughs> right i mean no. to the point actually that, i'm like... not gonna say that <laughs> actually no i'm I... not gonna say that i'm never gonna say that again but like to the point that even in you know my silly little analogy I don't like I'm like is masculinist the right word is that the is that the the, the opposite I of guess. feminist <laughs> I guess. but like we I've never we literally don't have a word for it no. like that's that is how removed gender is from like the male conversation as director yeah. right it's well, why never would once a man, comes up why would a man make a movie that's about his gender specifically which is also like getting you know not to dive into a completely different conversation but like <laughs> especially when like you know, when a gay man makes a film mm -hmm. and like, especially like old, you know, like films that were made back then, like there was a higher chance that people wouldn't assume that because there's totally. no way that a man would ever make a film that has some sort of subtext about gender or right. sexuality. Right. Mm -hmm. Men don't make films with subtext. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Movies are just about things. They're just about <laughs> dudes. <laughs> Anyway, I just, yeah, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's interesting because that I would have said this is like a kind of feminist film, but also it's like, it's just anti-patriarchal and also yeah. like anti, like anti-repressor. Like it's literally a political film made by a woman. Right. And so if she's like, I'm not a feminist, don't, don't say this is a feminist film. I'm like, all right, great. Yeah. If that's, if that's the director's word on it, then I, I take her word on it. Yeah. Great. Well, that's, well, that's, <laughs> um, there it is. What, what do you want to kind of talk about like our favorite totally. visual sequences yeah, in this? I think, because I think obviously we, should. we can't really talk to like, and this scene really moved me, Yeah. but like, you know, moments that we really love. Um, I'm going to, I, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a bet on air. I think, I think I know, I think you and I have a favorite sequence that we share between the two of us. Oh, okay. I'm going to try and we'll see if I fall flat on my face. Yeah. Just knowing you, 
and knowing mm -hmm. the things you like and enjoy and knowing mm -hmm. the things I like and enjoy, I I think the psychedelic train sequence. Oh my god. Just consistent wows. Yeah. <laughs> just like watching it and just being like and it just keeps going. It just keeps and going. And then like a train moves into frame and then like people walk around and it's just like I would just watch that. Yeah. You know, I would just watch <laughs> this. And I especially love when it goes into the dark of the tunnel and then there's just like like that weird that like, little like glimmer right at the yeah, end. Yeah, that little like yeah. glimmer, like just kind of yeah. Mm. Yep. I did not look into how any of this was achieved. I don't I don't want to know. It just okay, happens. Great. It, it just, just exists. Happens. It's magic. It's just how <laughs> it's film magic. is made. Um yeah, no, there yeah. is there are a lot of techniques in here that are like even by today's standards, like just as as somebody who edits to pay his bills, like I watch some of this, like the sequence with the scissors, and like yes. the mosaic oh, going on yeah. screen. As soon I was as like, it becomes mosaic. How are they doing that on how are film they doing that? stock? I was that's gonna crazy. Say, because like even today, if I watched this and this had come out this year, I still would have been like, that's a cool effect they achieved. I wonder how they did yeah. that. But that's like with all of the digital tools that mm -hmm. we have, and knowing this is like 1966 film totally. stock just being like how how'd you do that one yeah how'd you do that one that one what hello mm -hmm. hello hello yeah mm, the scissors sequence is, a, is incredible i also mm -hmm. just want to shout out the sheer amount of like coloring in this mm -hmm. of like entire scenes like you know i just and also just how many times she gets the like the wow factor from just like shooting something in black and white and then suddenly revealing all of the color like at the end with the feast yeah and how we're seeing it in black and white and then like they sit down to eat and they gasp and then we get like a bunch of like quick photo shots of just all of the food dishes and you're just kind of like overwhelmed and it just achieves that feeling of like oh my god this is so this is incredible this is amazing totally. like how would you not indulge in this yeah that's so cool and she does it a few times as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah but like those those sequences, I love that kind of orangish. It's not quite sepia. There's like mm -hmm. that kind of orangish tone that she shoots. The first time I think it shows up is when they're having that first dinner with, um, you know, the uncle of the boyfriend. Yeah. Um, like that tone was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? What are your thoughts on all the coloring in this? I just, I, I think, I think it's really great. I love something that I was thinking about a lot this time around, and like the thought occurred to me during like the nightclub diner scene where they come in and the, 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 the performing couple comes out and they're dancing. Um, that whole sequence, I was just watching it and when they're getting kicked out, it's so Chaplin-esque. It it's is. so silent. It's like 100 all of that is. blocking of like picking them up and they dropping and he grabs one and the other veers the other way. Like it's so like all I can think about drinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like everything about that physical comedy and the way that it's shot and staged. And I'm like, this feels like it was made 40 years before this. Like it feels so evocative of the 1920s. And that's how I felt about the tinting as well throughout the whole yeah. film. Like those those moments of like color washes over yeah, black like and white footage. Yeah, green and pink. It reminds me of the, like the Kino release of Caligari. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, just the, again, I love that color wash effect. It's so cool. And even to like, I love that silent film comparison because even to the point that as I was sitting down with my partner to watch this, I was like, it also might be silent. Like I couldn't remember. Sure. But I just remembered like from visual cues, I was like, no, it's just like pulling from that. Totally. In so many sequences. And it's like simultaneously feels like a film that's like 40 years older than it is, but mm -hmm. also a film that feels like it's 40 years like younger than it is. Totally. Like you I know? was thinking about that with the way that they're styled the dresses and yeah. the eye makeup and like the flower crown i was like oh this is late 2010s hipster like that's yeah. it's so which, that which vibe pull a lot from like 60s 70s looks but this right. is like even feels like 70s this feels like and the way that some sequences are like shot and edited and like what it's touching upon with these two characters it feels 90s to me like it mm -hmm. feels like a 90s experimental film at the same time as being like a 20s comedy like it is yeah so like Timeless while also actively like pulling from eras, some of which hadn't even happened yet. You know? Right. Like the, the 90s pull is such a good one because I like I was reminded a ton of like run, low to run. Yes. That was in the yeah. back of my mind a lot with like just some of the editing choices that they're doing. But yeah, it is. 
it's weird. It feels like you said, 40 years older, 40 years younger, and also fully contemporary at the same time, which is yeah. just so interesting. But yeah, even like even even the stuff on the train, like getting the old guy on the train and hopping off and he hops off and they get on. Yeah. It's it's Harold Lloyd, it's Buster Keaton. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, I just I just I couldn't get over that this time around of just how so much of it feels like it is stylistically designed to be a silent film. Yeah. But which sound is, is such an important part of it. Which is all, and it is, because they're also experimenting with sound in a lot of ways. Like, it literally opens with them as dolls, with right. their joints creaking, and, mm -hmm. like, then being liberated from being dolls, you know, yeah. by taking the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, and then, you know, like... Mm -hmm. And also, it's just, like, really good character design for these two characters of like one of them always has the flower crown one of them always has the pigtails mm -hmm. and it's like a lot of their costumes in the first half are like black and white mm -hmm. like they are just like this perfect match and to the point that i was like how is this not taken off on like niche film tiktok or twitter yeah and led to like so many like bestie duos just doing the daisies costumes for halloween because it mm -hmm. feels so easy to be There's... like if people know it they'll know it like if we did we keep talking parker parker and mm -hmm. i keep talking about doing a like niche film history party where you have to dress It'd as like fine. a character from like a film hit like you know a film from like before 1980 or something mm -hmm. like that um yeah just like film bro not film bro but like film major party where everyone yeah. dresses as like niche film character and i feel like the marie's are a great option they like, are well literally just, yeah you knock it out of the park with you, with you mentioning that, like, that was another, like, thought in the back of my head when I was watching it, is that I was like, our friends Liv and Abby would kill this. Like, are you kidding me? I know, right? Ugh, yeah. Yes, I agree. I also was, like, immediately, like, when Will watched this, did Rio watch this with him? Because I feel like our <laughs> friend Rio would also. Rio, really Rio, Rio is not, because I saw them, and I asked them if they wanted to watch it with me, and uh, he's like, Rio's been wanting to watch it, and she's like, I don't, I don't think I have it in me today, but yeah. I want to. Like, okay. I, it's, it is on my radar. She's like, I don't have the focus for it right yeah. now. But I, I think I think that's been a blind spot for her so far. Well, Parker, this feels like a, a killer movie night. If we I think so. Get those three friends. Get those three friends and be like, all right, you're sitting down, you're watching this. <laughs> you're sitting, you're going to watch this. And it will fundamentally It will change lives. Life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, I wanted really, to... it, it really is, though. I don't know. Yeah. It feels like it would just kill with a lot of, like, modern... Totally, um, you know, like tendencies and like, especially on social media, like you see all these like screen caps of obscure movies. And I'm like, how has this not done it? But it's literally because it was like banned upon release and yeah. it's kind of been set back by that forever. And I'm mm -hmm. so glad that it entered Criterion last year or two years ago. Yeah, I think I think that's going to help it a lot. Um, I was curious to ask you, I wanted your interpretation and opinion of like. Because the first time we see them is that doll sequence with the creaking joints. But the very first thing we see is this montage of war footage. Yes. It's bombs and anti-aircraft fire. And I just, I'm, I'm curious to know what you think of all that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a framing device in a way mm -hmm. of like reminding people of, you know, because this world, what it is, is it's World War II bombing footage. Mm -hmm. It's from a specific dive bomber. Um, oh, okay. And... I think that's to like one, it ties into the, like their they open up and they go, Wow, the world's getting bad. Why shouldn't we? Like yeah. if everything's exploding and we're always going to war and everything's miserable, like why shouldn't we be bad too? Like why shouldn't mm -hmm. we act, you know, this way? Right? Yeah. I feel like it just kind of lends itself to the framing of like, wow, men in charge are just constantly making these massive, awful messes that are killing people. So why shouldn't we be allowed to just make these messes and not kill people and just like fuck with them, you know? Right. Yeah. But also I think it does kind of set the stage for like, because this is also coming from like, not just the female perspective, but also like being poor in Czechoslovakia during communist rule. Like mm -hmm. you, I don't know, like, because also at the end, right at the end we see that footage again and then stamped over with like bullet sound effects with every type it says, hang on, let me pull it up exactly. But, um, let's see. 
It's the sound of paper rustling. <laughs> He's he has a leather bound tome. I have a leather bound tome. Oh my goodness. Obviously. Oh, where is it? I know that it was listed here. Hang on. Parker st stall. Oh, I'm hanging. Stall. Stop. Parker stall. <laughs> Please. What's the deal with <laughs> airlines? Ugh. Okay, well, I can't find it. That was my reaction to your joke and also, <laughs> um, also me not being Here, able I'll, to find this. I, I remember... Uh, I'll get I'll get the gist of it and then we'll find the specific phrasing. Okay, but great. it was basically something along the lines of like, this film is dedicated to those who only get upset over like stomped cabbage or yeah, something it's, uh, like it's, that. What it is is it's a it's a a stepped in trifle. Mm, gotcha. It's, yeah. So it's like if you, if the if your only indignation in life. Yeah. This is this film is dedicated to those whose only indignation is a you know a stepped in trifle basically I think is what it is, and. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, yeah. Those who get upset over only a stomped upon bed of lettuce is what comes up. Oh, interesting. The that was the translation is, I had. That is not the translation that is in the Criterion translation. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the subtitles okay. say trifle, as does the essay here. Okay, interesting. Yeah, everything I've got is bed of lettuce. And that was the one that I saw last night. Hmm. Well, it sounds like we've got a real... Real, hmm, real, real translation, translation conundrum. Hmm. But I think they both, you know, that because that's the idea of just yeah, it like, gets it yeah. across mm -hmm. of if you're if like the thing that you get the most mad about in life is if someone has messed with your food among yeah. like war, you know, mm -hmm. if people get, you know, what it kind of reminds me of, mm -hmm. and it's different, but it kind of and I, this is the first time I'm bringing this up, Parker. <gasps> it reminds me of the reaction to Glass Onion, and let me explain. Mm, okay, in that Glass Onion ends with the burning of the Mona Lisa, which is the entire point of the movie. Yeah is art is not more valuable than like human life, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And like, if, if that makes sense, like why would we put so much onto a piece of art in that way? Mm -hmm. And like when it burns, obviously Miles is upset, but then you have, you know, like, I don't know. Does this make sense? Of yeah, I'm like, following. Because everyone who also watched that movie went, well, I, we even had friends who were like, well, I don't know why they would burn the Mona Lisa at the end. I didn't, that wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. And it's like, right, but isn't that, like, I don't know, like, if you're choosing between, like, justice for this woman who was murdered mm -hmm. and the Mona Lisa. Yeah. I feel like. Totally. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, that totally makes sense. I don't know, that's sense. where I'm kind of at with this, of, like, I imagine people watching this at the time, and when they're all, like, you know, certain people maybe, because obviously this film is popular, but if certain people were watching this, and they saw them messing up all this food, and they go, just, I mean, I like the message of the movie. I just really wish they weren't stepping in all that food. That's so, Yeah. why would they do that? And it's like, right, but that's like the point. And also it's not real, but that's the point, right? Totally. And like, if this, if this is what's more upsetting to you, than like the repression of a people mm -hmm. and like the, in, like the inaction of a government to like necessarily like help people in the way they need to be helped. And again, I don't know a ton about the, the political situation at the time. That's sure. just kind of the message I'm getting. This film is dedicated to you. Yeah, yeah, which I think is just very interesting. Um, and I agree, I agree totally with your read of like the framing advice in the beginning. Um, I also love intercutting the bomber footage with like those gears moving in yeah. time with each other of just yeah. the, the machine of it all of like, okay, this isn't stopping. It's just going to keep going and then going to them and being like, the world is spoiled. So let's just be spoiled, right? Yeah. Also, so, that mm. machine gets a cameo in the film. Oh really? Well, did you remember when they put on the cool like industrial hat and like oh, wire wrapping right. and they're in like a junkyard and they just see the machine? That's and right. Then they, and then it just cuts to somewhere else, but they see the machine. They see the machine. That's right. Anyway, I sorry, you, I totally cut you off. No, that. you're fine. For, you're for fine a, for a dumb mention <laughs> of the machine. But. Um, something that I thought was interesting, and I remember feeling this way when I watched the movie the first time, and I felt this way again, and then like sat on it and examined it. I'm like, oh, that's very interesting and very good. Of like two thirds of the way through, it got to the point where like one of the Maries has a very specific laugh that she does mm -hmm. that is so put on and so yes. fake and so shrill. And like by a certain point, it starts actively like annoying me as the viewer. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that and I was like, that's so interesting because so much of this movie is so obviously like 
taking the infantilization of women that so many men like desire and want and fetishize and cranking it to 11 yeah. and just pointing out the absolute absurdity of all of it. It's like, isn't this stupid? Like, isn't yeah. it silly that you want women to be this way? Cause yeah. it's, it's weird. It's so put on, it's so fake. It's so shrill. Right. And Absolutely. I just thought, I think that's such an interesting choice of yeah. taking those aspects and commenting on them by just hyper cranking them all up. Totally. I love that. I think I have one more thing about that. And I think we should dive into discussion because this is so different from citizen Kane that I think totally. it's going to be a yeah. little trickier to I've, figure I've out here. I've been thinking about that all week. But, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, in 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 Carmen Gray's essay on daisies in the Criterion mm -hmm. Blu-ray, um, they specifically write um, that uh, when this was shown in um, okay, well here we go. New York Times Bosley Crowther, who after seeing the film in June 1967, disparaged it as pretentiously kooky and its central pair as thoroughly empty-headed. And then Gray writes, what he failed to recognize was that under patriarchal and totalitarian oppression. Clearing one's own mind can be a radical act of deprogramming. Mm. I think that's also a very interesting read on yeah. kind of their empty headedness of like, that's also like the, the most kind of <laughs> revolutionary you can totally. be. Just like, I don't have any thoughts anymore. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> you know? that itself is an act of rebellion. Yeah. If you're going to have so much propaganda, constantly using words, telling me what to do, I'm going to just completely empty my head of that. Totally. You know? But I really like, your reading of like cranking that up to 11 to just be like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. This is so ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So hmm. and now I we'll take a, now we'll take a, everyone break into groups and we'll discuss. Yeah. All right, everybody uh, <laughs> go, go into your breakout rooms. Uh, we'll come back, <laughs> man, going, doing school during the pandemic was I think, I think you saying let's go into our breakout rooms while on a Zoom call really <laughs> messed me up, Parker. <laughs> Need to take a break for a minute. After, yeah, why, why would you do that to me? <laughs> Sorry, man. Didn't mean no, to you're jump fine. scary. No, you're fine. It's how we met. It was, it was a <laughs> that warm, is how we nostalgic met. feeling. You and I met like this. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> yep. Probably in a breakout room discussing a movie like Daisy's. Probably. Um, okay, great. So, yeah. so I've been thinking about this literally ever since we picked the movie but especially like in the week leading up to this of just this criteria conversation is going to be so interesting because it kind of feels impossible <laughs> in so many ways because they're just they're not even on the same planets with each they're other they're not they are not of like any goals motifs I mean, they ideas are both kind of mocking an established machine sure and kind of governmental control or not government but like a, a a a powerful control of something yeah right because citizen kane is kind of parodying kind of the the kind of like the kind of fascist tendencies that were on the rise at the time totally. as well as just like hearst himself who is kind of a monopolizing like kind of fascist leader in the media sort yeah. of situation and Citizen Kane is mocking that. It is just doing it in a completely different way than totally. what Daisy's is doing. Yeah, like you you make a really great point about that that I hadn't fully considered thematically. So there there is there is a connective thread it's like there. A one very yeah thin connection because like it, from there like jumping into the first question of like historical and technical relevance. It's I, it's so tough because mm -hmm. you know I. I am not nearly as well read in experimental film history as I am in like narrative film history. And like yeah. what little I do know, if I'm looking for a Kane corollary, it's probably like Meshes of the Afternoon, which right. is earlier than this, right? Yeah, much earlier. Yeah. But like it just I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know <laughs> the breadth of this movie's influence in that sphere. Yep. And I wish I knew more. I wish I, I, wish wish I, I was better you. educated. I just have to go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because I also uh -huh. don't know anything. <laughs> but hmm. it's yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 intrigued. Like because on one hand, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be working this out in real time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm please. gonna I'm gonna Google how did daisies <laughs> impact experimental. Perfect. Film? 
Um, yeah. Just like on one side of an argument, you could lean on like sheer quantity, right? Of like, okay, in the history of cinema, the quantity of narrative films influenced by Citizen Kane is more likely higher than the quantity of experimental films influenced by daisies if you wanted to take that very didactic numbers argument of it i'm yeah. like okay quantifiably here is this right mm -hmm. i don't want to do that that's not no. the way my brain works but again working through any possible options in real time of just how to even approach this specific question because even like even jean diamond has a narrative to follow like we had some bearing to go off of right yeah. And that could be in direct conversation with Kane, but like these are just it's it's more than any other movie we've talked about, it feels like the you know, comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they're both fruit. They're both yeah. films. <laughs> <laughs> I think orange is fundamentally doing a better job than apple. <laughs> what? Huh? Huh? I think I, I think it's better fruit. I don't know. Objectively, better fruit. Object objectively, a better fruit. A better made fruit. <laughs> yeah. With apple, you can skip uh, seed. And sometimes orange, you can't skip seeds. So. Yeah. Hey, all I'm saying, orange, you can eat all of it. <laughs> apple, you get a core. You're really going to munch on the core of an apple? Um, actually, I don't know. What about, actually, what about the peel? Oh, oh no. <laughs> you got me. Uh, zest, technically. Zest. Oh, anyway, God, these characters came back, Parker. <laughs> they're back, no. And they're comparing apples and oranges. Uh, any, I agree. any. I yeah. agree. Unfortunately, our criteria just doesn't. It really, just kind of falls apart. Kind of, which is like good for us. Yeah, I think. it is good. Because again, I think so. pointing out to everybody, this show doesn't mean anything. No, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh... Nothing we've ever said on this show makes a difference, mm -hmm. except for how it impacts your thoughts. I guess exactly. I don't yeah. wanna, I don't we want to influence you. I don't want to devalue. <laughs> people liking the show i'm just saying that you know at the end of the day yeah this isn't the end all of sure. discussion on movies yeah well i can't find anything that is explicitly saying that daisy's influenced this 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 um it is the highest ranked czech film in mm. uh they shoot pictures don't they which is an aggregator of critic best of lists okay so this is it would seem from an aggregation of a bunch of critics reviews this is the highest ranked czech film Sure. And it was also ranked the sixth greatest film directed by a woman in a 2019 BBC poll. So, Great. Out of curiosity, that. while you've got that pulled up, um, mm -hmm. I would be curious, is it is it on the sight and sound list? Good question. I'd be curious um, to know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think I remember seeing it on there, but... No. Just, I, feel like, I, I feel like... Yeah. Hmm. I have to search sight and sound list. Sure. Man, if only I'd done research before the show. <laughs> well, I'm asking you questions that are very <laughs> hyper-specific that I wouldn't expect you to just come with, you know? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. thanks. I do what I can. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just... I, while you're searching for that, I'll just keep yep. yeah, keep doing my keep thing. Talking. Just like, I... It's so difficult in the sense no, that it's, like it's not it's not okay but meshes of the afternoon is number 16 okay okay well so that's... it seems like you're right in, in thinking that that would be the cane of experimental film but again i don't want to look at this movie as the cane of experimental right film. exactly <laughs> but it's just again trying to find something to, to gear us through um, sorry you were saying oh just that like the other ones we could probably answer to one degree or another, but like yeah. this one, I think might be our first like actual tie. It might just be a neutral point in both movies' favors. Historical and technical relevance. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how we could make. Yeah, a I point mean that's argument. like that's like saying that like that would be like trying to determine whether World War II had any impact on Mars. You know, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, that's fair. That's fair. maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, I guess, but like, maybe it would have taken a long time for that to trickle up to Mars. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't so know. I like, think I'm good with calling this first one a tie. I think. I think it's. I think it's a. I think it's not even a tie. I think it's the question is like not applicable. Moot. Yeah, not applicable. <laughs> it's moot. 
yes, Citizen Kane probably takes it. Maybe. Yeah. But again, Daisy's has risen above the realm of Citizen Kane and exists on a different plane. So right. it's just completely different. It's it's Mars. Yeah. If Citizen Kane is on Earth, Daisy's is on Mars. Yep. Well, I guess it could be on Venus, but let's not bring in that. <laughs> let's not that do that nonsense. Don't bring those guys let's back. Let's not bring those guys back. Um, okay. How well do you think it's doing what it's trying to do? Hmm. I think it's doing it quite well. Yeah. I think. I, it, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, this whole idea of you don't need to tell me what the movie is about. Let the movie tell you what it's about, right? Like, let the movie mm-hmm. speak for itself. And I think it does. And I think there is a plethora of interpretations that could be had, right? Like, you know, the Criterion essay written by somebody who is much smarter about film than I will ever be <laughs> has a very interesting opinion that I like a lot about this idea of, like, being mindless is a form of revolution when you're being fed propaganda. Yeah. And that read can exist. And then, you know, the interpretation I have of like, oh, cranking fetishized female infantiliz- infantilization up to 11 to show the ridiculousness of it. I think, you know, you could make an argument for there's there's textual yeah. evidence to pull. And I think if that is her goal from like those interview moments and conversations where she's like, I don't want you calling it a feminist film. I don't want you calling it anything. I don't want you labeling it. Just it's a film. It's a film. Yeah then I think it does a really good job of that. Yeah. What about you? What do you think? I agree. I think this is a really, like, it's it's experimenting with a lot of film techniques that are really interesting to watch, and it's mm-hmm. also still fun to watch, even today. Yeah. Not to say that a movie has to be fun to watch. A movie doesn't owe us that, but... Sure. Um, it helps. It helps. <laughs> and I, have, once again, have not stopped thinking about or talking about it uh, since I saw it again. Mm-hmm. So... I think that it it stays in the mind and it is like you can read into it and there's a lot there. And also I think it's really, I want to commend it for being super readable while still being a, an experimental film, like the opening, you know, kind of visual metaphors of like dolls and then garden of Eden. And then like that being the fall of these women, like fall in quotation marks. Right. Um, just reads, you know, and like so much of it reads and so much of it's fun to watch. That's it. I just think it's, I think it's yeah. absolutely doing what it's doing, trying to do really, really well. Does it do it better than what Citizen Kane's trying to do? I don't know. Apples <laughs> and oranges, Earth and Mars, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. I, I say will to say, our own criteria. Yeah. To, to, to give us a tiebreaker, because I also feel that way. I'm like, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I just know that this yeah. movie's doing what it's doing really well. I do think. In the world of our subjective little podcast, I mm-hmm. I do think that I have told more people about this movie after watching it once and initially giving it three stars and forgetting I gave it three stars. I've told people about this movie a lot and I've thought about yeah. this movie a lot and was actively shocked when I was like, I really gave it three stars the first time and I bumped it up to four this time and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So... I, th- I think for me, that's like my personal tiebreaker of like, yeah, I, to a layman who is learning about film for the very first time, like, I'm more likely to throw this into their curriculum than I would be necessarily Kane. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I also want to say that Citizen Kane in its own way was also experimenting with film techniques, which I Definitely. think is just an interesting point to make, is that yeah. that was also an experiment right? Of sorts like with 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 storytelling and with like film craft. Yeah. Right? And this is, <laughs> this is going to sound like a terrible, terrible metaphor, but just go mm. with me for a minute. I'm not yeah, trying okay. to compare quality. I'm trying to Parker, compare that's what impact. this show is good. <laughs> but like to your point, it's, it's this idea of like something that is revolutionary when it first comes out and then is copied and mimicked and echoed throughout time mm. can become sort of blase yeah. in the sense that like, you know, the Avengers was a huge thing for movies when it came out that we'd never had. Okay, here is four or five movies building up to a crossover with each character having their own movie, and here is the big event. And now we get those all the time, and it's so blasé and formulaic. But at the time, yeah. that was really exciting. It was very new. Yeah. In the same way that, like, to your point, everything we know about 
narrative filmmaking and using the camera to tell a story was revolutionary when Citizen Kane came out. And it has been copied so many times. It's like, yeah, that's just the norm for movies now. Yeah. So I think that's a really good point to bring yeah. up. And with Daisies, I watch it and I don't feel like I've seen anything like it since. Even though yeah. we literally compared it to like 90s and contemporary. But like, totally. it still feels like its own thing that hasn't been replicated in that way but also maybe it has yeah maybe i should watch more experimental film i really liked daisies answering the third criteria i really liked it Mm -hmm. i think it's a lot it's so fun to look at it feels like something you could turn on even just at a party and like if you you know if you don't want all the sound you could just mute it yeah uh and just look at the visuals and it would be so great it would be interesting to watch this silently yeah the one the one thing that i ran into with it which was kind of interesting for me um was that uh, the first time I watched it, I watched it with other people. And then this time I watched it by myself. And it is, I'm not going to say a tough watch by yourself, but it is like, you ju- it just so is interactive in the sense that like, I kept wanting to like talk to somebody about it and it yeah. was just me. Ugh, and so yeah. it kind of became a little bit more daunting in that way that I hadn't anticipated. Yeah. So yeah, like you similar, said, like, no, similar to like Akira, it mm-hmm. feels like there's an angel in your room, but this time it's like talking to you <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, this would be a lot easier. If there was someone else here. <laughs> this would be really easy if I had somebody else. Yeah. So like, it doesn't feel th- no, it's just like, but this, it's just like if you woke up kind and there was of a weird, like glowing aura in the corner of your room, you'd be like, can I talk to somebody about this? <laughs> somebody, hey, please. Or, or do I just have to like keep looking and listening to this until it goes away? <laughs> yeah. 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 So just to your point about like, you could kind of turn this on at a party. I, I feel that of like, it, it's very much a communal movie in that yeah. regard. Love that. Yeah. Is that so, it? Is that everything we have to say? I think so. I mean, great. Do we give points? Do we, <laughs> <laughs> did we give any point? Okay. Do you, you'd rather watch, would you rather watch this than, would you rather watch this than Citizen Kane? With just, other people, yes. By okay. myself, no. <laughs> okay. If you had to watch a movie by yourself, you'd pick Citizen Kane over this? I think so, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> just because it doesn't funny. look like staring into the center of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, staring, staring into the center of the sun with your friends is better than staring into it. I alone. think so. I also think this is maybe a little more enjoyable than staring into the sun, but totally. I haven't done that, so maybe... <laughs> All right. Well, that's daisies, everybody. We, that's just, da- we just we just didn't give points. We, we just act. We just didn't. You know what? Okay, but yeah, what, I like okay, that. but here's the question. We have to answer the question, though. Oh, we didn't right. do the points, but we still have to answer the question. Dude, oh man. Yeah. Sorry, pal. Yeah, hey, that's I chose the format. The movie. I chose to you, break. You the did show, this. So. You broke the show. You broke the show. Now you have to lie in it. Okay. Fine. All right. I'll try and put it back together on a, on a, like they do with the dinner plates at the end. Oh, perfect. I'm like, Great. no, I'm fixing it. I'm putting it I'm back. I'm really it. happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, so happy. I'm so happy. I'll go back. I'll go back. I'll do what you want me to do. <laughs> we, we didn't cover daisies this week. We covered something else, and it's, it's great. It's great. Okay, Parker. Do you think it's better than Citizen Kane? <sighs> oh, the tension. The tension. I I'm going to go with yes. Okay. Cool. What do you how do you feel? This is a hard one because I literally of course Yeah, I think I like it more, but yeah. Do I? <laughs> I don't know. Look, if if nothing else, I'll just lean on my letterbox score. I think I gave Kane hey. three and a half last time and this, this is for technically this, I said it was better. This and Kane is tied for me. Okay. So, okay. Then I guess. I guess. Let me double check to make sure that I'm. I'm not just. We'll just. Just going go off, it off. Of Parker's star review rating to determine yeah. whether it's better. Because I am the end all be all. I have the master's degree here. That's true. <laughs> we you listen do. to me. Oh, I should lean on that more. You should. I don't have to do anything because Parker's got the masters. I gave. I okay. Last time when we watched Kane at the beginning of this year, I gave it three and a half. I gave this four. The most recent time I watched it. So. Great. Just because right. I need something, I'm going to say that Daisy is better than Citizen Kane. All right. Sounds great. Um, 
There we go. It's set in stone. It's official. Yep. And as we said earlier, that means something. That means something. It's ironclad. Never say otherwise. No, we are the end all be all. Yeah. (laughs) Great. (laughs) This was fun. That's Daisy's. That was was fun. What a fun movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Definitely watch it. Um. Do you happen to have the calendar? I do. Okay, great. Because is it my pick? It is your pick. Okay, great. Everybody next week will be coming back with Orlando, 1993? Two. Two. Oh, I always get it wrong. 1992. Yeah. Fake fan. Also, I got Greatest Showman wrong at the, in the intro last week. I said 2016, not 2017. I'm sorry about <sighs> that, too. Why do a podcast if you're bad at it? Anyway. Oh, yeah, bad. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I've never seen Orlando. You've never seen Orlando. I'm so excited. And I know so next excited. to nothing about it. We should watch it together. We should. And we should right. get some people together, some very specific people together to watch it. I love some specific people. Great. All right. Well, catch you later, everybody. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.